Now, question four starts out quite nicely with a kind of GCSE question. Uh, you should know that electrons transfer charge in a metal and in an electrolyte it is the ions. That's all they need, so that's some very straightforward, easy one mark things there. The next one, uh, you've got loads of data here. Uh, you've got the area, you've got the charge, and you've got the time. So first of all, what's the current? Well, the intensity of the current is equal to the quantity of charge divided by the time, and that's why you've got Qs and Is there. So you've got been given the data in the question, uh, and therefore 650 over 5 is equal to 130. So the current is 130 amps, which is pretty big. That's a high current. Okay, uh, the total number of electrons passing any point in the rod per second. Well, effectively, because current is the amount of um, charge transferred per second, you've got 130 coulombs moving per second, and you know that the charge on each electron is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. That's the elementary charge. That means then the number of charged particles is equal to the current over the elementary charge. So 130 over 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 is 8.125 times 10 to the 20. This is a very large number, but that's because electrons are very small and there's lots of them. So I've given my answer as 8.1 times 10 to the 20 electrons per second. Part three, uh, we want to find out the drift velocity of the electrons, uh, given that the number density is one times 10 to the 29. So this is in your data book, I equals A N E V or I nave. Uh, v then is equal to I over A N E. We've got the number for the current that you've worked out up here. And again, if you get that wrong, it's error carried forward. So that's always good for you. So if you're gonna get one thing wrong, it doesn't matter. It'll only lose you one mark. I've got the area they've given to me directly up here in the other part of the question. I've got the number density and I've got the charge, the elementary charge, and that gives 2.708 times 10 to the minus five. This is incredibly slow, but the drift velocity of the electrons is actually very, very slow. Although they might be moving quickly, how quickly they move along that wire is incredibly, incredibly slow. And therefore the mean drift velocity is 2.7 times 10 to the minus five meters per second. Okay, the next part, um, the copper rod, is connected to a longer, thinner copper rod Y. So you've got basically copper, and therefore the number density is gonna be the same, and you've got something which has a bigger cross-sectional area. So state why the current in Y must also be the current, uh, must also be the current I. Well, this is due to Kirchhoff's first law, that the current in any part of that series circuit must be the same. So let's think at this point here as a junction, uh, the current into the junction, which we could call IX, must be equal to the current out of the junction, which is IY. And if you maybe think of Kirchhoff's first law as a letter I, then that maybe lets you remember that Kirchhoff's first law is to do with current. Next, the next one here, okay, rod Y has half the cross-sectional area. Calculate the mean drift velocity of electrons in Y. Well, we know that V equals I over A and E. And if you've got the same uh, charge on the electrons, you've got the same current, and you have the same number density, because it's the same material, that means V is proportional to one over A. That means if the area goes down by a factor of two, the drift velocity must go up by a factor of two. And therefore I just doubled my previous answer. Again, I used the, the raw number that was in my calculator. And that gave me a value then of 5.4 times 10 to the minus five. So basically when the, the electrons go from here to here, they've got to get through a smaller area, so they speed up. Uh, and that's basically the, the last part of that question. And uh, the next video is all about question five.